welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the feature in my laundry room that got everyone the most excited and that is the pull out drying racks. Now I did install these drying racks in a cabinet that I built from scratch. However, these are super easy to install in an existing cabinet or even if you don't have a cabinet and you have two walls on both sides, you can install this between the two walls and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So let's get to it. The drying rack is made up of round dowels. I used wood dowels because they are super cheap and easy to cut on my miter saw, but you could obviously use steel rods or aluminum rods as well. The key is to make sure that all of these rods are exactly the same size. So I set up a stop block on my miter saw and made all of the cuts. So let's talk really quick about the dimensions of the drawer itself. The first thing is that the width of the drawer is going to be one inch shorter than the width of the opening. And that is because each of these drawer slides are usually half an inch thick. Now you obviously want to make sure that you check the manufacturer of your drawer slide to ensure that that is the case. And then in terms of the depth, I typically go about half an inch to an inch shorter than the total depth of the cabinet itself. And once you have the dimension of the drawer itself, you want to use that and the thickness of the boards to decide exactly how long each of these sides is going to be. All right, so we've got all of our dowels cut up and I've also got all the parts of the drawer that is going to make the pull-out drying rack cut up right here. Now, before we start assembling, there is one important thing we need to do and that is all of these dowel rods need to be waterproofed because they are going to be a drying rack. I'm going to be using a spray sealer to seal these because it's a round object and it is so much easier to seal or spray a round object versus painting it. Now I was trying to brainstorm the best way to keep it straight standing while I spray it and then I thought you know what I am going to be creating holes in these to put the dowel rods on so why don't I just use that as a stand. So that's what we are going to do. So first up, we're going to measure and make all the holes and then we're going to go ahead and spray them. And that way we will also be sealing this inside of the drawer as well, which is exactly what we want to do as well. So I measured and marked the exact location of the dowels on the sides. Now this does take a little bit of math. The dowels themselves are three quarter inches thick and they are spaced at two and a half inches each. So I measured and marked everything accordingly and made the holes using a three quarter inch Forstner bit. Now each of these holes need to be three eighths of an inch deep. I realized that the Forstner bit itself was three eighths inches deep. So I just used that as a guide and eyeballed it and it worked out just fine. And finally, I put all of the dowels into the sides to make them stand up so I could take them outside and spray them with the waterproofing sealer. This is essentially a spray form of the spar urethane. All right, now it's time to build the drying rack insert. And this is pretty much like building any drawer, except that instead of the bottom of the drawer, we will be adding in those dowel rods. I am using pocket holes to build the drawers and if you need a detailed tutorial on how to build the drawers, I have a full video on exactly that and I will add a link to that in the description below. And once I had the three sides attached, I added all of the dowels into place. These dowels are pretty tight. I definitely needed a mallet to get them all in there. And once all of these dowels were in there, I added more wood glue and added the fourth side. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. This is probably the most trickiest part of this project because you need to get all of those dowels aligned and into the holes of that fourth side. Plus, they are pretty tight, so you have to use a mallet and kind of force it in. But then ultimately I decided that the best way to do this was to use clamps. So I used all of the clamps and at that point I realized it was going out of square. So I used the clamp across to make sure that the box stayed square and then went ahead and squeezed everything together and attached the fourth side with pocket hole screws. 
I did make sure to check that everything stayed square. And finally, the drying rack is ready. All right, it is time to install this into the cabinet. And like I told you, this is exactly how you install a drawer as well. So I used a few scrap pieces of one by threes to support and keep those drawer slides level while I attach them to the sides of the cabinet. I used some paint sticks as a support for the drying rack and added in the other sides of the drawer slides and attached those to the drying rack insert itself. And once I had a couple of screws in, I just removed it and added the third screw on both of the sides. And that is it. The drying rack is in place. Now, because I added this drying rack in, and this is probably something that you are going to do as well if you're adding it to an existing cabinet, I needed a shelf on top of it. So I simply used some scrap boards, supported it, added the shelf in and attached using pocket hole screws. Now the screws are facing up and will be visible. So I used dowels to fill up those screw holes to make them nice and seamless. Now the final part of this is to add the drawer fronts and I like to use the Craig hardware jig to make the hardware holes and then use those holes to temporarily attach the front in place while I attach screws from the inside and then I just take those screws out and add in the hardware and it's done. So there you have it, super easy to build, super easy to install. And also these dowel rods are spaced such that there is enough space to add a hanger underneath to hang clothes to dry. Now obviously this is not enough space to hang clothes to dry and we don't really need it because I do have an exterior drying rack that I built a couple years ago. I will add a link to that in the description below. However, if you wanted to use it for that purpose, you could easily add the drawers up higher in the cabinet. You could add multiple drawers so you would have a whole range of drying racks. It really is super versatile. And like I mentioned, you could add it in an existing cabinet. You could add it between two walls. It's all your choice. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't checked out the makeover of this laundry room, be sure to check that out. You will not believe what this space started out as. I will add a link to that right here. And if you wanna see all the tips and tricks and details on how to build drawers, be sure to take a look at this video. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.